Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Acherno. Welcome to episode 28 of Game Programming. So, there actually wasn't an episode yesterday, and I'm sorry about that. And in the future, I'll actually tell you what's going on right now. So, first of all, there actually wasn't an episode yesterday because I'm working on a, quite a big project right now. And I just don't have time to, uh, to put out an episode every day. So, what's going to happen is I'm going to put out an episode every two days, okay? So, every other day... I'm going to put out an episode of Game Programming. And it's going to continue like that until I actually finish up this project. And when I do, it'll go back to being daily. So yeah, now that we're clear with that, um, let's, get, let's get back into this. So what do we have? We just, had, we, we just talked about, uh, about tiles and, and stuff like that. And we're still working on tiles here. But what, what we actually didn't cover yesterday, um, or not yesterday, sorry, the day before, um, was this, this render stuff that I didn't actually insert into here. And that's sort of what, what we're gonna uh, start off now and finish, you know, some later episode. But um, if we go back into our screen class, and what I'm doing by the way there, in case you guys don't know, is you can actually hold down control and click on the name of whatever, basically, and it'll take you to that source. So if I click on screen over here, it's just gonna take me to here. Um, if I click on super, if I, sorry, if I control click on super, it's gonna take me to the super which is the tile constructor. If I uh, control click on screen, it's gonna take me to the screen class. So again, very useful. Um, but yeah, what I wanna do is, I'm just gonna like sort of start rendering from scratch again. So I'll leave this method here just for reference, but I'm, like, I'm actually gonna pop down here and make some room for myself here so you guys can mainly see what I'm typing. So to render a tile, like a few things actually go into, go into that. Um, and you've got to think about these things, right? So one of the things that definitely go, go into them is where we actually render the tile. Now, there's many ways to do this. I'm going to be doing it on an offset based system. So in other words, we're going to, we're going to factor in the player's position and then offset each tile accordingly. That's a very popular way to, way to do it. It's um, the, the only other way really of doing it is managing each tile's position separately and that's not that's not you know that's just not practical we sort of want to automate that process and control like i guess well in other words if we're offset if, if our player has sort of moved to the right um two pixels right then we sort of want to offset every single tile to the right you know two pixels or actually to be to the left two pixels if he's moved to the right um actually would it be um move to the right if it moves to the right, then the screen sort of moves to the left, doesn't it? So yeah, it would be offsetting to the left two pixels. Um, and that's sort of how we're gonna deal with that. So we probably won't cover offsetting today, but we'll actually get onto, you know, rendering tiles. So let's just type public void, public void render tile, okay? And this method is gonna be you know, this method's gonna exist to render, you know, individual tiles, not necessarily stuff like, because previously we just had a render method. This is, this is just gonna be rendering tiles. Now we'll have separate methods in the screen class for also rendering things like mobs, rendering things like lighting, but for tiles, we've got a separate method. Um, and the thing we need is the X position and the Y position. So in XP and YP, this will be the individual position of the tile. And finally, we actually need to know what kind of tile we're rendering. Now, there's actually, technically you could do this in, in, in multiple ways because we don't really need to know what tile we're rendering. We just need to know what sprite we're rendering. So we could actually set it equal to a sprite rather than a tile. Um, and that's up to you. I'll show you guys how it works both ways. But just for, you know, for lack of a better reason, I guess, well, if in if in the future if in the future we we start playing around with sprites so like water for example becomes animated which you probably will um we could we could run into problems by using sprites so i'm just going to type tile tile that'll also make it easier because if we suddenly change a, a tile sprite we won't have to update it in the in the tiles render method um yeah, we'll, do, we'll keep it as tile for now. Uh, let's import this as well. And so because we're rendering individual tiles, we sort of know what size the tiles are. Um, well, we don't know what, what, size the tile, what sizes the tile actually is. Uh, we assume that it's 16 because that's what we've set it right now. But 
we don't know. So that's why I don't really want to just default it to 16. Um, I, I sort of want to, you know, make it universal for any sprite sizes or any tile sizes. So we'll type for int y equals zero. Y is less than, and then here we'll actually type tile dot sprite dot size. All right, y plus plus. And again, what this is going to do is this value is actually 16. All right, this is 16. But in case we do make it 32 for specific tiles, for example, I don't know why we would, but we might. Um, we sort of want to look 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 ahead and be like, oh, actually. Maybe in, maybe like in a few months, I might add 64 size tiles, like really huge tiles. There might be a map that is just huge, like just has really big tiles. You want to sort of foresee that because if you, if you code for four months straight and you come back and you're like, God damn it, I have to change every single render method now because I've just, just made this one small change. You know, we sort of want to try and foresee um, problems that we might run into. Hence this tile.sprite.size thing. Um, all right, so the next thing we need to do is actually define a variable which contains the absolute tile value. Now, what I mean by absolute tile value is there's two different, there's relative values and there's absolute values. Um, and uh, basically what an absolute value is, it's an absolute value is just the absolute value of something in, in 3D space or in, in this case in 2D space, all right? So in other words, what happens is the absolute value will always be, um, it will, it will, in other words, if we set the absolute value to a particular value, it will always, if we set it back to that value at any point in time, it will, it will render the same result. And that made absolutely no sense. So I'll explain it in a different way. Um, if we had, in fact, I think I just might use paint.net to help me out here. If we had a tile here, uh, let's just say we had a tile right over here. Um, and then we had a red tile over here, right? And of course these aren't square, but whatever. We have these two tiles here. Now, this tile, right, if I just look at the coordinate, it's sort of at around 90, 120, all right? So I'll just probably just, where are my tools? Oh, no, that should be on the screen. Here they are. Um, this is going to be a long episode. Uh, so 90, 120. That's the, that's the location of that tile. And then the location of this tile, right, is 440, 380, roughly. Now that's all cool, right? We can work out that the distance from X is 440 for this one, 90 for this one. And that is the absolute value, right? Because whatever, if, if we want to pop this back into this original spot, it's going to actually, it's, it's 440 relative to the actual world. So it's relative to the background almost, right? It's, it's the absolute position of something. Now, relative positions might be like, this X, for example, is 400 from this. Now that would change, right? Because what would happen is if we put this X to be relative to this X, if we change this, it's gonna move both of them, all right? Not just one of them. Whereas if we're dealing with absolute positions, when we, if, if we move, if we change this X, it's just gonna change this X. Not, not this one, because this one isn't relative to it. They have absolute positions, all right? So it is a bit confusing, but think of an absolute position as an, as a position that's relative to the actual, to the entire world. And a relative position is a position relative to a particular object, okay? Um, so to set the absolute position, we could call it YA for Y absolute um, equals, uh, it, it'll basically be um, the actual, the required position of it plus any offset that we might throw at it. Um, and because we don't actually know that offset yet, because we haven't set it, I'm just gonna put it, um, I'm just gonna make a variable here called, I don't really wanna control it in variables though. Um, yeah, we'll do it this way. So YA will equal Y plus YP, and then YP, I got rid of all my spaces. Um, and then YP will actually change depending on the offset. Okay, so we'll modify this value to account for the offset. But it's, so it's taking this Y and it's adding it to uh, the, y, the Y position of the thing, right? Because this, this is the pixel that is currently rendering, which has to be to 16 for, uh, for the entire height of the tile. And the location where it's actually rendering that pixel is going to be offset by this value. So primarily it's gonna be offset 
by where it's supposed to be located in absolute space and then where it gets off offset it to, all right? Because we'll, we'll modify this variable eventually to include the offset. Uh, what are we at right now? Freaking 10 minutes, all right. Um, I'm probably gonna, gonna end it there, guys, just because um, I don't wanna keep these episodes short. I know there's like a huge debate going, going on in, in the comments as to, you know, you either want longer episodes or you want shorter episodes, whatever. Um, really, I, I made this series to make them short episodes, okay? Because, you know, so that you guys wouldn't have to set out like half an hour a day to watch these and be able to keep up with them really easily. So, um, so yeah, but anyway, that's pretty much how offsets work. That's what we covered today. And tomorrow, or sorry, the day after, um, we'll get back into, you know, into rendering this, this tile. So until then, guys, thanks for watching. Please hit, hit, please hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Mm-hmm.